Capsicums are one of the most profitable crops to plant in Kenya, though it performs depending on seasons. In a greenhouse, however, it can be harvested throughout the year. Farmers growing yellow capsicum are twice more likely to sell their produce at double prices than those with the red variety. According to global provider of agricultural science and technology Sigenta, yellow capsicum has really high-end markets which make it more profitable for farmers. The red variety on the other side needs extra care for the flowers to survive and mature into fruits unlike the yellow type. Let's take a look at the three varieties of capsicum. Welcome to today's episode of Kilimo Nabiashara, a show that brings you different types of farming methods as well as all emerging trends in agribusiness world. Today we want to focus on capsicum farming. Probably you might have seen it in your retail shops but you don't know how it's planted. It's famously known as a pili pili ho ho. I'm meeting one farmer, Henry Njuguna, who's going to take us through how he practices this type of venture. Join me. Henry, hello, yes. how are you? Fine, thank you. Naskia, wewe ndio mkulima mashuhuri wa hoho. Tell us, how do you go about capsicum farming? To begin with, as you can see, I'm doing greenhouse farming. And uh, personally, and most of the farmers around here, what we do, we get seeds and, they, and then take them to propagators, professional propagators. It's like uh, planting, they are based in Naivasha, we also have Grace Rock here in, in Limuru and we also have a logo note farm. Yeah, they are the professional propagators. So we don't plant seeds as such, it is the seedlings. One of the main problems we have with seeds is adulteration. People get seeds that are not certified, they are packed. You cannot even tell the real seeds from the fake ones. So where can someone source for capsicum seeds? So for you to be safe, you go to the dealers themselves, buy your seeds, take them for propagation. Uh, propagation takes roughly six to eight weeks. Then you get your seedlings. You come and plant them now. Mm -hmm. Yes, so what are the stages involved when a capsicum is germinating? The gestation period for capsicum is about three to three and a half months, depending on a number of factors. There is uh, weather being the main one. Because when it is very cold, you find growth is also slowed down. So they'll take some time, three and a half months or even up to four before they mature. Mm -hmm. But when it is uh, hot, within three months, you are harvesting. Uh, what we have now, these ones, I planted them on 9th January, specifically this year. Today, mm -hmm. they are exactly three months and if you look around like uh, I was telling you you can see there that there are many ripened fruits mm -hmm. in fact I'm going to do the first harvest tomorrow Henry for someone who's intending to begin capsicum farming what are those key requirements the land must be prepared you do something called deep digging deep digging you can dig up to two feet or at least one and a half feet and then you see like this, so this is an eighth of an acre by the way, and it is holding like uh, 34, 3500 plants. Now here I usually add something like, when I'm starting, eight tons of uh, manure, and not any other manure, manure from boozies, we get it from Kajiado. You know manure from boozies is more decomposed as opposed to, to cows. Uh, the digestion of cow is uh, very poor. In fact, if you look at the waste from the cows, you still find undigested grass and the like. So that if you use cow manure, it will take a very long time because it is before it is of any use to the plant. So you add that manure, then raise the beds. If you want to plant double bed like I have done, the beds must be raised. Uh, then the drips. 
the surroundings must also be cleared because you find that uh, if you have uh, dirty surroundings, and when I talk of dirty, it is uh, uh, weeds and the like, they have a pest. And of course you need to get a, a good uh, farm hand, mm -hmm. someone who is experienced. Which types of capsicums do you have here? Because you say there are different varieties of capsicum. We do have the green capsicums and we do have the colors. The colors are uh, yellow and we also have the red. In fact, we'll be seeing them shortly in this farm, red and yellow. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are favorite in the market. Mm -hmm. This is the yellow variety. You can see they are, start they are starting to ripen. Yeah. This yellow variety is called Springbok. Mm -hmm. It is from a company called HM Close. Mm -hmm. Before you explain to us this particular irrigation that you use here, where do you source your water? The goodness is that, because you see the uh, swamp is just here, the water table in this area is quite high. So once you drill a borehole, come rain, come sunshine, mm -hmm. it will be producing as much water as possible. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a problem of water as such. Mm -hmm. The problem of water that we experience here comes when we do have a problem of power failure because we use electricity mm -hmm. to pump the water to come to the farms mm -hmm. directly from the borehole itself. And what are the challenges that you go about at this particular stage? One of the main challenges that we experience at the, this small stage is pests and diseases. Now, there is a fungal disease called powdery mildew. Capsicums are highly prone. It is the, 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 the spores that cause this uh, powdery mildew are usually found floating in the air. So, during the dry windy season, they are carried from many where they brought into the house. You can see these houses are not uh, dust proof. Once they come and land on the leaves, they start germinating. They cause havoc. So that is usually a very serious problem during the dry season. Uh, I want to take you to another part of the farm here, mm -hmm. so that you can actually see what it means for the fruits to ripen. Mm -hmm. yes. I told you we have yellow and red. Yes. You'll see the ripened yellow, then you see the ripened red, mm -hmm so that you can see their difference yes. when compared All to right. the green, what you have just seen here. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, let's go and see. Yes. So here, these ones are the green variety or it has not ripened yet to transit to the next color? Actually, this is the yellow variety. Oh. But it is beginning to ripen. If you look at this uh, beds here, yeah. you can see, you can only see a few starting to ripen. Mm -hmm. But if you come now some, I want you to come here mm -hmm. and look clearly. Yeah. Look clearly. Mm -hmm. That way. Can you yeah. look clearly? Just mm -hmm. bend, bend, bend. Yeah. Just look down there. Mm -hmm. You see there is a lot of yellowing. Oh, there is a lot of yellowing and uh, one particular tree can have how many of these capsicums? Uh, you see they start reproducing from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you can go at any one time, mm -hmm. find one carrying up to nine or ten. Oh. And they'll go on producing continuously until they reach the top. Mm -hmm. That uh, wire there where there is, there is the support. Yeah, and yes. I see they are very big. How do you ensure that you get good production? Of course, uh, there is a question of variety. The other varieties mm -hmm. that uh, grow smaller. Mm -hmm. But apart from varieties, there's also the question of management. Yes. The kind of fertilizers you put, mm -hmm. the kind of uh, pest control and the like. It is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Just like in a young child. Yeah. If a child is well fed, mm -hmm. you expect them to grow healthy. Yeah. Where, where do you sell them? When it is at its peak, mm -hmm. per week I can harvest a ton. At its peak, mm -hmm. a ton. Mm -hmm. And how much do you sell? Again, prices vary. Mm -hmm. They vary a lot. But uh, when the prices we say are good, we say an average of 150 per kg.
We are taking a short commercial break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. You are an agronomist in this farm. Maybe you can tell us when you come here, what do you normally begin with? What do you normally look at? Uh, I usually start with the farmer the very first time he or she brings of farming. Uh, that way we start by preparing the business plan or the business case mm -hmm. where we get to know the cost of our production yes. and the returns of that production. Mm -hmm. Then from that now, that when we, we now we we, 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 we take the next step of mm -hmm. now uh, buying the necessary equipment in farming. Like in mm -hmm. our case here, mm -hmm. if a farmer has no greenhouse, we construct one. I, I, I connect him to the best uh, mm -hmm. constructors yeah. in, in, in town. We construct one. Then from there, we go to the seed, seed selection. Now, we, we, uh, from the seed selection, when we get our, 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 our the best seed uh, to, to, to grow, mm -hmm. depending by uh, now the, 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 uh, what the farmer wants mm -hmm. or what the market is in need of. What should a farmer look out for when they want to venture into capsicum farming? Like I told you, is farming for business. When some farmers do farm, they can produce very nice capsicum, but at the end of it, they realize that the cost of production is very high because mm -hmm. sometimes they have used excess farm inputs, sometimes they have used exaggerated uh, uh, farm input. That's why now when an agronomist comes in, we advise them on the economical use of this product mm -hmm. so that when they produce each and every fruit, they can produce it with the least price possible. Mm -hmm. They can now be competitive in the market. Yeah. The last issue, you need a bigger size, lesser, lesser size of land. Another thing, it's easily manageable. You need less people to work in it compared to, 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 to the open field. Also, the returns or the quantities harvested inside the greenhouse are more compared to the open field production. Mm -hmm. The stages of development of the crop. And in these stages, what the crop needs. Because uh, at, at fruit formation, if you do a lot of nitrogen uh, fertilizers or nitrogen products, you will end up developing more leaves other than developing the fruit. So at that stage, there is a required nutrient that is needed in order now to have a quality seed, quality fruit development. Yeah. If a farmer can produce quality, every market we run to that farmers. If, even farmers, most of the farmers are discouraged by the, the, the reflux in the, in the market. But for a quality producing farmer, and that is now what we look into, we look into as agronomists, mm -hmm. quality producing farmers never misses the market, regardless of who has brought what and at what time. Mm -hmm. They are always in the market. Mm -hmm. Now what we advise them is consistency. They must have this product throughout the year because one, for, for the guy who is in the market who is selling the capsicum, there is no time you'll wait now tell him, now I don't have capsicum, you can close your shop so that now when uh, my capsicum mat matures next time, we can continue now selling them. Yeah. That will not happen. So you have to be consistent to make sure you have a continuous supplier. Yeah. And co talking of continuous supply is quality. They are, they are so specific. Market is so specific because of the quality. And now you can see even uh, for, for this fruit, mm -hmm. They are very beautiful. The beauty is brought in by the quality addling of the crop itself mm -hmm. to produce such a beautiful fruit. Mm -hmm. yes. How is the future of capsicum farming in Kenya? The future of capsicum farming is very bright because now uh, comparing it with 10 years ago, there were less consumers of capsicum in Kenya. And that, as we speak at the moment, the sub, with the farmers, or the farmers who are doing the capsicum farming cannot satisfy the consumption of capsicum farming. So I would advise many farmers to come on board. Let's grow together and grow the best capsicum.
Why haven't you ventured into the export market? In fact, as we are speaking, my phone is ringing and it's been ringing all through because uh, there are so many people who want them. There are the individual buyers who want to come and buy 50 kilos, 100 kilos and the like. There are those who will tell you they want to come and buy bulk, like two tons you have they are going to buy and the like. Then I do have people, uh, it's like I have a contract with them. Not uh, a very binding contract as uh, 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 such, but uh, by a, a kind of gentleman's agreement. I take to them, I take to them, uh, whatever quantity I produce. And those are the, man, the, the ones that I deal with mainly because uh, if I harvest one ton, if I harvest two tons, I just deliver them to where they are, or sometimes they come for them. Now, when it comes to harvesting, different buyers require different degrees of ripening. There are those ones who will tell you, I need 75% and above ripening. 80% or 90% or complete ripened. Others will tell you I don't need that one. I need roughly 50%. Others will tell you I need a mixture. 50%, 20%, 80%, they are mixed. This of course will be informed by where they are taking them because they don't take them to consume. Where they are taking them and uh, what use they are going to be put to. Because there are times when uh, we do have something almost like a glut in the market. So you'll find the prices for colors can uh, come to as low as 60, 70 or something like that. But on average, when it is not so bad, not so good, we sell around 100 per kg. And when I talk of a kg, if you have good fruits like these ones that are big and heavy, two can make a kilo. Whoa. They Thank can you. make, yes. So it's two. easy for you to give tons here. Yeah, at the peak of this one, I, 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 I can get a ton within a week. Henry, now I would like to see how you harvest. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is the fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't just remove the fruit from a tree for the sake of it. Now, I want you to look at this stalk. When you are harvesting, uh, we need to pluck it very, very carefully. We pluck the fruit with the stalk here, so that the fruit remains with the stalk. Oh, and wh why is that? This stalk, when the fruit is removed together with it, it increases the shelf life of the fruit. Because the mere presence of the stalk, it's like the fruit is still growing. It's like it is still attached to the plant. So it will stay for a long time. Otherwise, if you harvest right at the base of the fruit here without the stalk, the shelf life will be seriously compromised. It will be shortened. Yes. So that is the advantage when you want to harvest. Yes. Yes. Now, the other thing you have to note very carefully is that if you look at this uh, fruit, mm -hmm. it is half ripened. Mm -hmm. You can see this side is green, this one is it's yellow. It's yellow. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the degree of ripening, mm -hmm. you can increase the longevity or rather shelf life yes. of the fruit. Mm -hmm. Because a fruit that is, let's say, anything like 90, 100 percent ripened, mm -hmm. within a very short time it will become kind of flabby. Yes. Yeah. But if you have this one, it will take time before the green part turns into yellow. Maybe before I have this one, there is also the question of variety. Uh, there are certain varieties by, just by their very own nature, have hard skins. Others have soft skins. Now, if you've been in the market for long, you can talk to people who will tell you that this variety has a hard skin. And this one during transportation, uh, when you are storing it, when you are handling it, it will just remain a farm fruit. Others, when it is even dry in the farm, when the temperatures are high, it starts becoming fluffy.
Yes. So you need to look at that. Yes. Sour. Finally, I can see you are salivating. I'm I salivating. want to harvest this and one. You have to harvest that I take home. And some. you take home? Yes. And go and make a salad, mm -hmm. then thank me later. Yes. Okay. Now, <laughs> here we go. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going to harvest it yes. at the bud here. Mm -hmm. And the way I do it, I have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. This stem is fragile. Mm -hmm. I don't have to come and do it roughly yeah. like this. So I get hold of this stem, mm -hmm. then I do like this. You see, it comes out. That's all yours. Thank you so much. Go and make a salad. Thank me later. Thank you so much. Yes. You've heard it from Henry the farmer. He says that two little tricks. How you harvest will determine the shelf life of this particular capsicum. How you harvest, you harvest it with a stock. It will increase the shelf life and also water supply. Adequate water supply will give you good kilos of weight and that will translate to good earnings. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Kilimo Biashara. Until next time, my name is Linda Koskei.